spirit of God in the highest. God bless all the ministers that have been ministering before I came. And God bless Pastor Mike for that uh, prayer session. Uh, it was awesome. It was taking us into the realities of some of the things we'll be experiencing in this glory season. Glory be to God. And I'm in greater glory season. Amen. Come on, tell somebody greater glory season. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Very quickly, we have to pray tonight, and I just want to ignite some fire in our spirit to give us accuracy and precision in the directions of prayers as we go into prayers. And I wanted to know, ladies and gentlemen, that we've been praying before this meeting, and after this meeting, we'll continue praying. But this meeting sets aright some certain things about us. Amen. I'm not talking to somebody here. It puts you in the right mood for what God is about to do in your life. Come on, tell somebody, I'm getting something tonight. That puts me in the right shape for what God is about doing in my life. Glory be to God in the highest. A lot told me there is somebody here. It's has already started walking in your life. He <laughs> said tonight it shall be clear to every devil that the glory of God is shining through you. <laughs> Come on, shout hallelujah. Say, I carry greater glory. <laughs> Say, I carry greater glory. Hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God tonight... We are looking at how to position ourselves for greater glory. How to what? Now, I want to let you know that we have been doing that already. But you see, God is bringing it, ladies and gentlemen, to our understanding so that we do it properly. And then we position ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, for the greatness of glory that God is releasing at this particular time. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen. It cannot but be glorious. The might of God is on this meeting. So glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 I see the greatness of glory on your life. I see the greatness of his beauty on your life. The splendor of the king is shining on you. The majesty of the most high is reflecting on your life. Come on, tell somebody, I carry the greatness of his glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. What I was saying, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible made us to understand that there is a glory that excels. Second Corinthians chapter number three, starting from verse number seven to verse number ten. You see, on Sunday, God was making us to understand this, and I'm taking off from there. Second Corinthians chapter number three, and uh, from verse seven to verse number ten. I wanted to understand every time you see the word greater coming in, it is a comparative word. It is a word that is letting you know that something is coming that is coming in what I call a greater, a better, a bigger, a larger, and ladies and gentlemen, a more uh, beautiful dimension than it used to be. Am I talking to somebody here? So the concept of greater glory is telling somebody that yes, this is where you were <laughs> before the introduction of greater glory. But you know one thing after this season, every devil we know that something is shining through you. There is a glory, ladies and gentlemen, that cannot be disdained. I mean, there is a glory, ladies and gentlemen, that cannot be ignored. I don't know whether wherever you've been in time past, you've been neglected. You've been ignored. Men have looked at you and they couldn't just reckon with you. They couldn't give you the right hand of fellowship. They've been giving you the left leg, ladies and gentlemen, of disdain. The left leg of rejection. i got a goodness for somebody here. There is something coming on your life that will make it so impossible for humanity not to respect you. It will make it so impossible for humanity not to recognize uh, even the beauty of God upon your life. Uh, am I talking to somebody here? It is called a greater glory of God. Uh, it is called a kind of glory that ladies and gentlemen lifts you from where you've been even to where you ought to be. It lifts you ladies and gentlemen from where you've always operated. I mean people have always known you as a tenant. Uh, the time of shining as a glory. I mean the time of shining in the glory of a landlord uh, is coming in upon your life. I said people have always known you as that sick man. The time of walking strong. I say it's coming upon your life right now. You have always been recognized as the poor man on the street. I mean the time even of the splendor of wealth. The time of the affluence of God. Even reflecting upon your life. The benefit of the flow of the almighty God moving in the times 
even that are beyond human comprehension. I mean, touching upon the inflow and the half flow of money in your hand called finance. I said that time has come right now when the gates of heaven are open and the floods of heaven are bringing in the blessings of all your life. When everybody can look at you and they can say this man is indeed a blessed man. When they can say that this man is a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaf never knows withering and everything about him is bringing forth results and seasons. Am I talking to somebody here? You are the one God is talking about. I said that time of rejection is over. I said that time even of disdain is over. That time of disgrace is over. Grace has come to take the place of disgrace. I said fame has come to take the place of shame. I'm talking to somebody here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The prosperity of your life shall be amazing to humanity. Everybody will look at what God is working out and they will see the manifestation of the Spirit of God. They will say this is impossible by human effort. It is only traceable to the workings of the Spirit. No wonder he carries the Holy Ghost. Am I talking to somebody here? Have you carried this light in obscurity? The time has come for the light to shine in your life. For no man lighter the candle and put it under a bushel. But he set up the candle even so that I might give light to everybody in the house. So is the city that is set upon the hills. The Bible says there is an impossibility. The Bible says there is a difficulty. He says there is an awkwardness. That is, ladies and gentlemen, clearly unapplicable to him. The Bible says he cannot be hidden. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm talking to somebody here. In your life, every obscurity is going into an oblivion right now. Anything that says your business will not be known is finally being submitted to history. I am talking to somebody right now. The light of your glory is shining. The beauty of God's power is rising on your life. Oh, come on, I see power surging into somebody tonight. I see glory surging into somebody tonight. It is the night of greater glory. What an experience of what God is working out. If you are the one taking up benefit, I think your human should be most amazing in the house. Are you hearing what God is talking about? We are in the season for greater glory. Let me tell somebody we are in the season for greater glory. So please understand the Bible said there is a glory that comparatively speaking excels. The Bible said if the glory of or if, the, if, if, if the glory of the ministration of death. Now that ministration of death every 7, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 relates to the law, the law, the law. Now if the glory of the ministration of death, the Bible says, if that glory, the Bible says, if the ministration of death is glorious in that the glory that shined on the face of Moses. Now you see, when Moses went to collect the laws, the Bible said when it was coming down, there was a glory that shone on his face. In Exodus chapter number 34, starting from verse 29, the Bible says Moses came down from the from Mount Sinai, and of course the two, you know, uh, 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 tenets of, of the law was were in his hands. And when he came down, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said his face was shining, so that Heron and all the people, all the elders, could not look at his face. So they had to take a veil to cover the face of Moses, so that Moses could address them, so that Moses could talk to them. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the Bible said this glory came because God spoke with him. Now, how did God speak with him? Whether by audible voice, whether by just listening, I mean, meditating on the laws that God gave him. Please understand the word of God to you is God's voice to you. I think you know what I'm talking about. So you see, by reason of meditation on God's voice on his life. The Bible said there was an impartation upon him. Now there's somebody I'm speaking to here. The what feast that is about to take place. <laughs> on Friday you come in and you're getting what loaded. <laughs> I said ladies and gentlemen on Saturday there will still be what loadedness. <laughs> I said ladies and gentlemen on Sunday. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there will be heavy what loading here. And as the word is entering you. The spirit is bellowing upon your life in a new dimension. The Bible said and the spirit entered me. When he spake unto me. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse number 2. And in Acts chapter number 10, the Bible says, why Peter yes spoke this word in the house of Colinius? And the Holy Ghost descended upon all that had him. Now please understand, as we are going through what I call the word feast, the power of God will be released like an effulgence of glory. And will be sinking, percolating into every 
aspect, into every aspect. I mean into every aspect of your life. Before you know what is happening, you will just see that what you used to struggle to do, you are struggling no more to get it done. You will see that you've been struggling with finance, you could struggle with it no more. You are struggling to pray for the sick, you could struggle with it no more. Even your presence will heal the sick. You're walking on the road. A particular radius around you, miracles are happening there. It is the glory of God that has come in a greater form. I said that the beauty of God has come to tabernacle with you. Your family will know that a Joseph has risen up. Oh, come on. I'm talking to somebody here. If that is you, shout amen. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? The Bible said if the ministration of that by reason of the glory, I mean, was glorious because of the glory that shone on the face of Moses. So please understand, he was talking about the glory that shone on the face of Moses. But you see, that is means thing is the ministration of that. But there's a ministration of the spirit from verse number six. He said, we are not talking about, ladies and gentlemen, the ministration even of just the latter. For the latter killers, but it's the spirit that gives a life. So there's a ministration of the spirit. And that ministration of the spirit, according to verse number 10, ladies and gentlemen, he said that glory overshadows the ministration of death. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That means the glory of the New Testament overshadows the ministration, the, the glory of the Old Testament. The glory of the New Testament, ladies and gentlemen, overshadows the best you could see in the past. Am I talking to somebody here? Now that is what God said I should tell everybody here. As we begin to pray, the Lord is telling me to tell you that in his name from tonight, in the name I am above every other name, you are so Submitting what I call the best of your achievement, even under the new order of things that will begin to happen in your life from now. He said, Yekebo Shakata, for the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The Lord said, The best of God is not in the past. No, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of today in your life, the glory of tomorrow in your life shall beat your past. I don't care how much you achieve in time past. Ladies and gentlemen, it shall be trash compared with what God is about to work out in your life. Oh, come on, here's somebody high five. Tell the person something greater is happening in my life. Are you hearing what God is talking about? So the Bible is saying that there is a glory that excel. It is the ministration of the spirit. Much more than the ministration of the latter for the latter killer. But it is the spirit that gives a life. Now how is the ministration of the spirit coming on the road? He came through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said in Matthew chapter number 3. He said my goodness the one who comes after me John the Baptist speaking. He said it's greater than I. Even the lashes of his shoes I'm not rewarded to, to, to lose. He said do I baptize you with water to repentance. But he that coming out of me, he says, shall baptize you with the spirit. <laughs> with, with the spirit and with life and fire. He will baptize you with the spirit and fire. Now, he will baptize you with the spirit and fire. So he is, ladies and gentlemen, the one who carries the ministration of the spirit. Jesus, the son of God. You will see the Bible saying, they sang the song of Moses and of the Lamb. That means the song of Moses and Jesus. Moses said, a hey, prophet like a to me with God raised even after my departure even for you. Now you see he was making a comparison between the mosaic era and Jesus' era because the law came by Moses. John chapter number 1 verse 16. But the Bible says verse 17 and 18. But the Bible says grace came even through the Lord Jesus Christ. So all through the scriptures you will see this comparison. But the comparison is no comparison. In that the glory that came through Jesus is the glory that excelled. And the Bible says by reason of this excelling surpassing glory, ladies and gentlemen, he completely overshadowed the glory of Moses. He consumed it all completely to the point, ladies and gentlemen, where we could find no other trace in it. Because in Jesus consists everything. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 17, in him, ladies and gentlemen, and by him all things consist. Am I talking to somebody here? You talk of Moses, he consists in Jesus. I said, you talk, ladies and gentlemen, of Elijah, he consists in Jesus. Oh, come on, don't tell me of the teachings of Samuel. The Bible says everything is consistent in Jesus. In John chapter 5, Jesus said, search the scriptures. 
For in them you think you have life. But they are the ones that testify of me. Verse 37. That means every scripture, except it's not a scripture, he finds his root in Jesus. In Luke chapter number 24, on the way to a mile, Jesus was admonishing those two brothers. He said, the Bible said, and he expanded them, and he encouraged them, even from the writings of all the prophets. That means there was not a single prophet that did not write about him. Both Old and New Testament. He is, ladies and gentlemen, the thematic subject of the entire Bible. Am I talking to somebody here? So he is the glory that exists. Oh, come on, come on. I'm talking to somebody here. He's the surpassing glory. Am I talking to somebody here? He's the embracing glory. He is the glory that, co- that carries everything. That is the reason why the glory of Moses was limited. The Bible said when the people saw they couldn't look at his face, Exodus 34, they had to carry a veil from verse 30, 31, 32, 33, 34 and cover his face. But there is no veil, there is no garment that could cover the glory of Jesus. The Bible said when he was praying in Luke chapter number 9, verse 29, the Bible says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was uttered. <laughs> and that translation says, and his entire face, everything looked white, like, like the sun. If you read Matthew, se- Matthew 17 and Mark 9, you will see all those accounts. Now the fashion of his face was uttered. And the Bible says, even his cloth was glittering and shining. Now you see, he starts from his spirit man out. Do you know what I'm talking about? That of Moses could only get to the, to the surface of his skin. A cloth can come and cover it. But Jesus was wearing cloth. Even the cloth, the cloth caught fire. <laughs> the cloth caught what? That glory penetrated through the cloth. It can, it's a glory that can be covered. To say that there is a witch affecting you, not lie. <laughs> After this conference, I'm telling you, no witchcraft will be able to cover your glory. <laughs> I said no sorcery will be able to cover your glory. Come and shout at the glory that excels. That is the glory we are talking about. It's not the coverable glory. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not the high devil glory. <laughs> I say it's not, ladies and gentlemen, the glory that devil can tamper with. There's a glory that cannot be stopped. There's a glory that cannot be hindered. There's a glory that cannot be blocked. There's a glory that cannot be impeded. It is the glory that we are talking about. The greater glory of God. Nigerian economy can't stop it. No, 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 daughter. I mean, the Nigerian economy can't stop it, son. Nigerian economy can't stop it. Dollar to naira inflation can't stop it. Am I talking to somebody here? When you need a car, you get it. It comes. You need a house, you get it. It comes. What they said, the economy is uh, whatever. Please understand, regardless of the economy, there is a glory that excels. I prophesy this glory over your life. Uh, the glory unstoppable. Uh, the glory unrestrainable. Uh, the glory that the storms of life cannot hinder. May this glory begin to reflect in your life from tonight. How do I position myself for the glory? Uh, please, um, uh, uh, keyboard is see me after service. God bless you. You can continue playing. Now, is somebody catch what I'm talking about? How do I position myself for the glory that what? That excels. Number one, ladies and gentlemen, the greater glory. Now, because that's the glory that is surpassing. Number one way of positioning myself Leporado Satayagaba, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Paradoste, Mena Kotek Sopre Ligerosta, Imamandali Doxte Zupre Ligerosta. I'm hearing wellness, wellness. You came here on well. Daddy said you are well now. In your soul, you are well. You came here troubled. I said, concerning that matter, Mama, it is settled. Sir, it is settled. I say, in your spirit, you are well. In your finance, you are well. In your body, you are well. Come and shout it, I am well. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Put it together for Jesus' glory. Glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shall grant a glory. Will you shall glory? Somebody say glory. Shall glory. Say greater glory. Say greater glory. Say glory. I see shining all over you. In the name of Jesus. You are shining in glory, in glory. How do I position myself for greater glory? Number one way of positioning myself for greater glory, I must let you know, is 
through spirituality. What do I call it? Spirituality is the first way of positioning yourself for greater glory. Every time you see glory, ladies and gentlemen, men must position themselves spiritually. Without spiritual positioning, without spirituality, engagement of your spirit, engagement of the spirit, please understand there is no way we can see the glory. Remember, the Bible talks about this glory that we are talking about. The surpassing glory is not one of the flesh. Oh, oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. It is the glory of the spirit. It is the glory of what? Of the spirit. You see, until you meet up with this condition, men cannot, cannot walk in it. The Bible made us to understand in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse number 6 that the ministration of the latter killer, but the ministry of the spirit is the one that gives a life. So, ladies and gentlemen, if it is of the spirit, then we have, ladies and gentlemen, to connect. We have to function. We have to position ourselves through the spirit to be able to walk in the strength of this glory. Oh, come on. Somebody catch what I'm talking about. So, the ministration of the spirit is the primary thing. Positioning yourself back the spirit is the primary condition you see you must understand something here there was a time they had a glory manifestation in the temple in the old testament at the dedication of the temple of uh, solomon can you remember the bible said in second Chron chronicles chapter number five uh, uh, verses 13 and 14 that the cloud filled the whole place uh, and verse 14 and the glory of the lord filled the whole house uh, now please understand you will notice one thing here there was a condition that was necessary for that glory even to be fulfilled this is the first condition is it this helps you to understand ladies and gentlemen the mechanisms or the mechanics of God's operations, the mechanics of God's glory manifestation and of God's power manifestation. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, there is, ladies and gentlemen, a mechanics, ladies and gentlemen, that is applicable to this thing. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, if you meet with a the condition, then you see the glory. That's just the truth. If you do what you need to do, then you see the glory. The Bible said in that Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse, <laughs> verse number verse number 12 the bible said and the number of the priests that were there were 120 can you see so 120 priests that god said the condition is met <laughs> and he gave them the glory now when jesus was going you know what the same thing the bible doesn't make mystic when he left in acts chapter number one the bible said in verse number 15 and the number of the disciples that were gathered together at the upper room praying <laughs> you know that they may see you know the glory that jesus said he says sojourn in jerusalem until you be endowed with power from on high the Bible said, and the number of disciples were 120 as well. Why, 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 why not 121? Why not 119? Why not 118? Why not 100? Why not? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It has to be the same. In the things of God, ladies and gentlemen, the glory of God, ladies and gentlemen, carries a precision. We must understand. That's why I told Moses, he said, make sure you build according to the pattern which was shown you. Because if you don't do it exactly, you may not see the exact glory. And the moment Moses built according to the pattern, the Bible said, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. That was the temple, the tabernacle of Moses. Now this is, so the tabernacle of Moses, ladies and gentlemen, received the glory by reason of compliance with the heavenly number with the heavenly pattern with the heavenly figure now the the glory of solomonic temple also received the glory by reason of a condition when jesus came and built his own temple he said please please burn down destroy this temple and in three days i will build it up he would bible said for this he talked about his body and his body you and i have the bible said for we are members of his flesh <laughs> and of his of his bones members of his body of his flesh and of his bones <laughs> ephesians chapter number five and verse number 30 is somebody catch i'm talking for is the head of the church, which is his body, Colossians 1 18 and 19. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So he's talking about you and I. So for the temple of Jesus, you and I, to receive the same glory, there must be a compliance with a particular condition. Am I talking to somebody here? And it was 120, 120 priests, and Jesus came. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 6, and in Revelation chapter 5 and verse number 10, that he presented us. He made us kings and priests unto God. So 120 priests also were gathered in Acts chapter 1 and verse number 15 and the same glory reflected as chapter number 2 there was a Russian sound of a Russian mighty wind and they saw cloven tongues of fire glory filling out the whole place am I talking to somebody here the same condition we are meeting right now and I see the glory filling up your life come on tell somebody I must comply with the condition to experience the glory so what are we saying ladies and gentlemen the first condition is spirituality. The Bible said in Revelation chapter number one, 
that I, John, when he was banished to the island of Patmos, and there he had the revelation of the Lord. Now, the story of the revelation of Jesus, the revelation of the glory of Jesus. Remember from verse 14, ladies and gentlemen, to verse 16. The Bible said, and I, I had behind me the sand. <laughs> oh, of course, he had behind him the sand of one as of a trumpet. When I went, he turned and he looked at him. Ladies and gentlemen, he saw one as of the Son of Man. The Bible said, of course, his eyes were like the flames of fire. The Bible said that there was a sword coming out of his mouth. From verse 14, Revelation 1, from verse 14 to 16. The Bible said, of course, he saw, my God, the seven golden, uh, the seven golden candles. And of course, the seven stars. And he saw everything. And he saw Jesus. And the Bible said that his face was shining, even as the sun in his strength. Verse 16. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jesus that he saw. But you see, the beginning of this revelation of Jesus in glory manifesting unto him ladies and gentlemen started with spirituality revelations 1 10 I John was in the spirit in the day of the Lord I John was in the spirit then I had behind me spirituality is the beginning of divine encounters without you being in the spirit it is a practical impossibility for a kind of man to be trying to do something spiritual it's going to be a frustration you can't assess it except by this spirit. Am I talking to somebody here? So he could not access that revelation of God's de of Jesus, uh, the glory of Jesus, except the engagement of him being in the spirit first. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, it is the time for absolute spirituality. It is the time for everything you can do uh, to engage spirit. Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? And the spirituality starts when, ladies and gentlemen, with you feasting on the world. I said, with you sitting down in the world. Moses had the voice and the glory began to shine on his face. Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says, and thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. And thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on you. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse number 3. Now God is going to keep him in perfect peace. In perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on him. How do you get your mind stayed on the one that is invisible? That means you are feasting on his word. Because his word is God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was a God. And the word was who? Was God. The what the mind can entertain is the word. Am I right? So when you begin to fix on the word, you are meditating on the word. You are less of the concerns of this world. Less of the concerns of how you're going to pay the house rent. Less of the concerns of how you're going to pay the student school fees. But you just tell all those words, you know what? You what do you leave me at this particular time? I'm not gonna take you right now. I'm gonna concentrate on the world. You understand? I'm talking about anything that is troubling you, you throw it out. Philippians chapter number four, starting from verse six, even to verse number eight. He said, Be anxious for nothing. This is the time, ladies and gentlemen, to entertain no anxiety. He said, Be anxious for nothing. But in everything through prayers and supplications, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall God reason and fortify your heart even in Christ Jesus how does the peace come he said, brethren, finally, he said, whatever thing be true, whatever thing be honest, whatever thing be just, whatever thing be pure. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, brethren, he said, if there be any good report, will there be any virtues, even if there be any praise? He said, feast on all these things. So that means base your mind on these things, and then you begin to see the peace of God, the manifestation. So what is the thing that is true? The house that has not been paid? No. Is what is the thing that is honest? The economy of Nigeria that is dying? No. What is the thing that is virtuous? You mean your neighbors are distracting you, fighting you every time? No. What is the thing that is a good report? Ladies and gentlemen, you mean, ladies and gentlemen, the news the Central Bank of not came? That they, they don't find dollars to pay the airlines? No. Ladies and gentlemen, what is a good report, ladies and gentlemen? What is a praise? The only thing that passes that test is the word of God. Every other thing failed the test at some point, but the word of God penetrated through for the word that's been tried. And the word came out uh, better than gold refined seven times. Uh, oh, come on, no impurity in the world. Uh, I said nothing impure in the world. Uh, I said nothing unjust in the world. Uh, I said nothing dishonest in the world. Uh, it is full of virtues uh, and it is full of praise. Give him praise, somebody.
Are you catching what I'm talking about? So base your mind on the wall and the peace of God will in your heart and mind. So when we live by the word, when we feast on the word, this is a word feast conference. As the word of God is coming, I mean, let your mind be prepared. Everybody watching me everywhere, send this message, put it on the platform. This is to prepare everybody for the conference. I'm talking to somebody here. He told Moses, he said, tell this people, prepare them for on the third day I will manifest. Am I right? The ministry of manifestation, ladies and gentlemen, is always preceded by the ministry of preparation in scriptures. For this is the voice of one that cries in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. He was the forerunner. And when he prepared the people, he raised them for 400 years. Ladies and gentlemen of apostasy, he brought God into a living day reality in their heart. There had been, my God, an historical figure unto them. And when Jesus came, he met that prepared. Jesus rode even prosperously on that horse. Am I talking to somebody here? So what God is saying is that he is preparing you right now. Get your mind straight on the world. Let me tell somebody, get your mind straight on the world. In Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 6, the Bible says to be carnally minded, he says death. To keep thinking of the economy is death. I said to take, think, thinking of the threatening word of that which is death. I said to keep thinking of the fact that you're working on legacy banks. I said it's death. To keep thinking of the fact that promotion has not come. The Bible says it's what? It's death. Carnal affairs, worldly affairs. That's what the Bible means by carnal affairs. The Bible says it's death. To be minded on that thing. Oh my goodness what to eat, what to drink. The Bible says it's a ministration of death. But he said the Bible says to be spiritually minded. He says it's life and peace. That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, when I engage the Holy Ghost, I mean the ministration of the Holy Ghost, the glory of him that excelled this season. The Bible says, and my mind is based on this, the Bible says life will fill my heart. Because the, the Bible says the life-giving spirit. And the Bible says peace will fill my life. Oh my no oh man, you know the meaning of peace. It is the stop, storm stopping power of God. It is the ability of God that goes into every area of challenge without you even speaking to the challenge and stops the challenge automatically. Am I talking to somebody here? Master cares not that we perish. Mark chapter number four. And he woke up from the sleep. He didn't wake up from prayers. He didn't wake up from fasting. He didn't wake up from any other thing. Even in the place of rest where Jesus was. And he stored the storm. He says, storm six. And there was a grace come. I don't know who I'm talking to here. The storms of your life will cease this weekend. Oh man, oh man. I am firing to somebody's spirit right now. I said the storms in your finance will be finally a better this weekend. Everything will subside. Everything will clear off. Everything will be dissipated. Everything will be supernaturally dispelled. Oh, by the power of the Holy Ghost. I said the devil be humiliated out of somebody's life. As I'm speaking right now, that thing is coming off your head. I said the devil is humiliated presently. Something is jumping out of somebody right now. It's the humiliation of the devil. It's the humiliation of poverty. It's the humiliation of that headache. That concern is living. I'm going to feast on the world. And I will completely debase my mind from any meditation that is Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Let me tell somebody, I'm concentrating on the world. I'm not going to have any concentration on, on any other thing. It's going to be what? On the word of God. So, spirituality starts with absolute concentration on the word. And that is what makes the glory to, to come up. Oh, give yourself unto these things. Meditate therefore on them. That's what? Your profiting may appear. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. We are in the season for the manifestation of your prophets. Glory be to God. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That's the first way. Second way. Is somebody catching me? Tell somebody second way. <coughs> second way is through prayers, most especially in tongues. Prayers, most especially what? You see, <coughs> when we are <coughs> talking about praying in tongues, I want you to understand something. <coughs> Focus, Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, the Bible says, whoever speaking in no tongue, he said, for no one understanding what he speaks. The reason is because what God is about to do, ladies and gentlemen, there are dimensions beyond human calculations. So if you're only limiting yourself to praying and understanding, praying and understanding is essential, but you see, don't let it be the main line. Let speaking in tongues be the main line. Because what God is about to do, ladies and gentlemen, will blow your mind. That means the best of your meditations have not been able to catch it. He said, eyes have not seen. <laughs> he said, ears have not heard. Neither has it come to the heart of... <coughs> Those, 
even <clears throat> out of any man, what God has in mind for those that love him. Can you see? He's bigger. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Verse 10. But the Spirit has revealed these things unto us. So you have to connect on the frequency of the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, to walk in the strength of that revelation. You have to connect on the frequency of the Spirit to walk in the strength of what? Of the, oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? So he's beyond just what my ordinary mind can contain. So I must, ladies and gentlemen, be able to go beyond even the sensible realm. Contemplating perfect entities in the realm of the, of the spirit. Pushing out and doling out, ladies and gentlemen, even matters that are beyond human comprehension unto God. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Engaging the Holy Ghost to pass these things unto God. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying it is praying by the spirit. Now, listen, the carnal man can't operate at this realm. No, 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 no. You can't operate through carnality. You need, ladies and gentlemen, the spirit. No, God, you, it's my shoe. You have not given me my shoe. Bigger than shoe is what he's given you. See, God can give you a shoe and he can give you a command over shoes. <clears throat> I thank God that God didn't give me a car. He gave me a command over cars. That when I say, I need this car, but also let's go and buy a car. And we go, the car comes. That's a command. <laughs> so what God is giving you, ladies and gentlemen, is not the shoe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's mastery over it. <laughs> that it will begin to answer to your back and, ah, yeah, 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 to your back and call. I'm talking to somebody here. I think somebody will go while we walk God is super imposing right now. As I'm saying, it's landing on your life. As I'm saying, it's somebody's receiving grace. I said, from tonight, mastery is yours. I said, supernatural command is yours. Say, I can command. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's bigger than what your comprehension can conceive. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, your conceptualizations may never be able to reach that height. So, you need, ladies and gentlemen, to flow at the frequency of the spirit because it's bigger than human mind. If somebody catch what I'm talking about. So, that's why we have to pray more in the spirit. Now, in Jude chapter number 1, verse 19, the Bible talks about those people who separated themselves. He said, for they are sensual. Can you see? They operate by senses. They only pray what their five senses can tell them. They are limited to what five senses can fetch, the information can fetch, and therefore they are limited to what, ladies and gentlemen, they can pray based on it. Remember, Jesus told my, my Peter, Matthew chapter number 16, verses 17 and 18. Who do men say, hey, Peter, say, you're Christ the Son of God. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed these things unto you. That means the five senses can reveal. You see, but you see, Jesus said, you have transcended beyond, beyond the five gates. The highs can reveal. It's your highs telling you that it is Pastor Femi that is talking. Now, your, your, it's that standing. Your ears are telling you this is Pastor Femi's voice. So, you see, those five senses, the highs, the, the ears, the nostrils, the, the, you understand, the skin. Ladies, I can feel that there is AC here. You understand what I'm talking about? Uh, and the, uh, the, the, the tongue can taste. You understand what I'm talking about? Those five gates, ladies and gentlemen, can bring in information to you. But the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen, there's a level of revelation that is beyond the information the five senses can gather. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. He said, not the flesh of blood has revealed this, but my father. Do you understand? So, it has to be by the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, to get, to get this thing. So, the Bible said, these people, Jude 1, 19, they separate themselves being sensual, not having the spirit, but me that carry the spirit. How do I operate? Then, the Bible says, you, beloved, having the spirit, Build up yourself. <laughs> Are your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost? Verse 20. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, so I cannot be praying the Holy Ghost and not be on the spirit line. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Am I talking to am I too fast in my teachings tonight? Is somebody getting something here? <laughs> so, when well, anytime you start Jagza, Elebo, Bangazilla, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, you're moving out of carnality. You are extracting yourself out of worries and anxiety, mama. And you are putting yourself on the spirit line. You are telling, I don't care whether the fig tree blossoms or not, whether there be food in the pantry or not. I am going on the spirit line. Am I talking to somebody here? I don't care the redness of the bank account. There's something spiritual that is happening in my life. As you begin to zag zanas, ladies and gentlemen, you are engaging the almightiness of God, even to bring to bear what the woman might cannot conceive for you in that conference. Now, please understand, the man of God that's coming on Sunday just called me about two, three hours ago. I was talking about him to someone to, to be at a conference, and my phone was ringing. Lo and Bill was the one. He said, man of God, I'm in my duguri. I said, right now? He said, yes. He said, we're having a crusade tonight. Baba Adeboye is here. Mommy Adeboye is here. And Baba will be taking his seat. Mama will be taking his seat. He said, they say, I'm the one preaching. Major crusade of reading. I told you, after Baba is the one that commands the largest uh, crowd, he told me himself in, in reading. You know what I'm talking about? They say he's the one ministry. Now, 
That means he's the kind of glory by the way you can say I can sit down and allow him preach. Ah. Eh? You will not carry that anointing here. You say nothing will happen in my life. No. <laughs> Something's moving. <laughs> Seeing his glory. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Something will move in your life this weekend. I'm hearing in my spirit there will be a shift. Everybody just lift up holy hands. Prayer is already going on. So just pray in the Holy Ghost. There is a shift. I said there is a shift. God is telling me that somebody doesn't need to wait until Sunday. He said the glory is already in manifestation in this meeting. For the sensitive, it's already here. <laughs> it's already here. There is a shift already. I said 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 wherever you are watching me from, lift up holy hands. There is a shift. I said that joblessness in Nekeboza is being converted right now. Even to full engagement, there is a shift. I said that poverty is being converted to riches. There is a shift. Let the weak say I am strong. There is a shift. I said let the sick say I am healed. There is a shift. He said, Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Oh, Mato Baraka, because of what the Lord has done. Somebody lift up holy hands. There is a shift. 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 Oh, give him thanks. Thank you, Jesus. If somebody catch what I'm talking about. You see, doing the will of God is the ministration. We don't need to say, yeah, let's pray. Baba, she. No, Baba, Tikbola, Tishe. How to position yourself because Baba will do what he will do. It is about you now. Oh, come on. That's what Baba told me. We, 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 I, my intention was that from the moment I hold the mic, we'll be praying all through. Baba said, it's not. He said, let them position. Let them what? <laughs> so, from now to Sunday hand, Lagada must not end in your life. You understand what I'm talking about? Bible says, for they are the ones that separate themselves, being sensual. And carnality is dead. To be carnally minded is what? They are full of five senses. But you are the one that transcends beyond, ladies and gentlemen, the five gates and its resources. You move into the realm spiritual. Not having the spirit, but we have the spirit. And you that have the spirit, Bible says, you beloved. Is building up yourself on your most holy faith. Doing what? Praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen, you are demonstrating that you have the spirit. You are connecting. You are moving on the spirit line. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Somebody wants to watch me in Canada now. They can't watch me until they go online. Am I right? Ladies and gentlemen, when you go on the spirit line, you will see God. As they are watching me in Brazil, they are watching me in, in England right now. Because they are online. Ladies and gentlemen, Liko Zebro di Garosta. When you go online in the spirit, you experience God. You experience Him. First Corinthians chapter number 14 and verse number 2. The Bible says, The Bible says, Whoever speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understandeth what he speaketh. How be it in the spirit? How be it in the spirit is speaking mysteries. Mystery means secret. It means what has not been revealed to your five senses. That means there are things God is about to do in your life that are that are still secrets. There are things God is a, there are dimensions. As I'm speaking, I'm saying by the spirit of God, the Lord is saying there's somebody here. I will change the dimension of the company around you. La parakata yagaba. You will move from the despicable company to the glorious company. You you will move from the rear to the front. You will move ladies and gentlemen from poverty to the company of the rich when they are talking about the successful somebody is escaping the failure line <laughs> and you are jumping ladies and gentlemen to the success band as a somebody here in the name of jesus christ of nazareth you are escaping those whose names are on the list of hospitals oh no 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 never again will you spend a dime on earth recovery i am talking to somebody here you are coming to the company of the of the healthy the company of the sun the company, ladies and gentlemen, or those that are vibrant and vigorous, even in Christ Jesus, you are one of them. Come and shout, man! Are you hearing what God is talking about? That's what God is saying. There's a shift tonight. How be it in the spirit that He speaks mysteries? Whoever speaks in another tongue, how be it in the spirit that He speaks secrets? That means things that are beyond you that you don't even know God is about to work out in your life. The Bible says as you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, you are speaking those things unto God. You are speaking those things unto God. 
You are speaking ways to open for you. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verses 6 and 7, the Bible says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. How do we speak it? You ever speak it in an unknown tongue? He said, the Bible says, I'll be it in the spirit that he speaks mysteries. So the wisdom of God, you are providing solution. Wisdom means solution. Wisdom answers the question how? Lord, how do I move from 10 era to 10 billion this year? Ladies and gentlemen, wisdom can answer it. Solomon said, for give me wisdom for how shall I judge these people? So wisdom will always answer the question how? How do I enlarge this business? Wisdom answers it. How do I move my destiny to the next level? Wisdom. So the Bible says, whoever speak, I'll be that we speak the wisdom of God. So as you are speaking in tongues, ladies and gentlemen, you are providing solution. You are providing solution beyond your fundamental human understanding. You are coming into realms where your forefathers have not been able to conceptualize. I mean, you are coming into a realm where you will make the best of your forefathers' achievement, even the smallest of your own achievement. Where, ladies and gentlemen, their own manners will become your own BQ. We are, ladies and gentlemen, your blessings will beat that of your progenitors, even to the uttermost bounds of the heart. And God will begin to confirm the blessings of the everlasting His on you. Why? Because you are speaking even the wisdom of God that is higher than the wisdom of man. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So this is the season to go on the spirit line. How be he in the spirit? He who speak in tongues. Come on, tell somebody it's time to go maximally. On the spirit line. That's number two way in prayers. That's why you will see that the Bible says, Acts chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says they gathered their and they were they continue in prayers and supplications. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And then the Bible says, chapter 2, the, the Holy Ghost came on them. So the time has come for prayers. And then the third way to position yourself spiritually, ladies and gentlemen, is worship. Is what? Is worship. This is the time to praise God. This is the time to give to God what God cannot give himself. Please understand if God needs a car, he can give himself. If God needs a house, he can give himself. So don't think it is the dollars you have been saving that you think that you're going to put in the hands of the preacher. That is what we are talking about. God is telling you that if I need dollars, I can give myself dollars. I am the Lord. He said, I created all things. For the head is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. That's what the Bible says. Psalm 24 verse 1. The heart is the loss and its fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell there. Psalm 50, the Bible says, cut on a thousand hills. He said, are they not mine? He said, all the beasts of the feeds are mine. He said, what is it then that you want to give unto me? Everything is mine. In Haggai chapter number 2, verse 7 and 8, he said, for the gold is mine and the silver is mine. So that means everything belongs to him. So what do I want to give him? What shall I render unto him? But there's one thing, ladies and gentlemen, that God cannot give himself. He, can, he has made the street of heaven, you know, made of gold, pure gold, not gold plated. That's why I pity people who say they are not going to use gold. They are deceiving themselves. I'm telling you, because the heaven they are going is, is not gold plated, it's pure gold. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And please listen, ladies and gentlemen, this God that we serve, this God that we serve, this God that we serve, ladies and gentlemen, could afford anything for himself. He's so rich. He has everything. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, as I said, there's something can give himself. He cannot give himself thanksgiving. I've gone through the Bible. I discovered God never thanked himself. Ah, and I thank myself for creating two sins. Did you ever see it in scriptures? Eh? I thank myself for creating fine boy part. Do you, you see it in scripture? I'm not talking to somebody here. That's the only thing they can't give himself. And then that thing, you are now, you now say you want to deny him. Do you know some landlord when tenants don't pay? You know how they how they get the tenant out? Well, I'm very pure. They go and remove the roof of their house. Give him his deals. Somebody give him his deals. Lift up all the hands and give him his deals. I said, give him his deals. I said, give a his deals. <laughs> Glory be to God. That's what the Bible says in John chapter 4. And verse number 23, 24, verses 23 and 24. For God is a spirit. And those that must worship him, must worship him in what? The Bible says, for such the Father seeketh. Now everybody is seeking miracles. God is also seeking something. Uh, God is seeking, can he? That's the truth. That's why the likes of T.L. Osborne will say, God needs me as much as I need him. Because praise. Because he needs thanksgiving. But what about the need? The Bible says, that's what he seeks. Everybody's going in the morning. Pow! 
Ah, 5 a.m. to Ireland. Why? One seat, go on Start for bread. So I can put food on their table. Am I right? Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? Everybody is so that money can be. You are doing the contract for money. Now, the Bible says, for after all this thing, do the Gentiles seek? Baba, I'm not late on seek. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He's seeking thanksgiving. He's seeking praise. He's looking for toast to rise to say, Baba. Kosa babire, koma si baba bire, oh, ah, koma solorum bire. And you know what? One thing God will say. God will say, You are meeting my need. Ah, Angel Gabriel, where are you? Yure, where are you? Raphael, where are you? Michael, where are you? Bukbuni Barakwata, how many of you billions? Bukbuni Allah, attend this. He's meeting my need. And he's not meeting it. You can't be meeting the need of God and you live your life in it. If you see a man who knows no need, he's a man of praise. If you see a man who knows no need, he's a man of thanksgiving. Am I talking to somebody here? For after these things, the Father what? Seek it. God is looking for true worshippers. So worship positions you in the spirit line. The Bible says, for God is the spirit. And those that must worship, must worship in spirit and in what? So ladies and gentlemen, when you are worshipping, that's why anytime I'm worshipping, the power of the Spirit starts manifesting. I've told you severally. When that thing comes on me, my hands will be burning. <laughs> this, this is what I tank in my house. It will be empty. And then I will come to come and press the thing to start pumping. And the Holy Ghost said, yeah, press, touch this tank downstairs and the tank upstairs will be filled. That it was empty. It will take like 20, 25 minutes for it to be full. The moment, you know, I just touch it like it goes. The tank upstairs is full instantly. It has happened not once. Ladies and at least I can recall two times. Two times. Again and again. And severally when that thing happens, when my hands are burning, if you say something is not working, I go lay hands, it starts working instantly. Then you understand? We finished praying one day, worshiping. But I said this, he said, I said this work club, what's happening? He said it has not worked, sir. He said for several, whatever. I said this work club, they were all there. And I pointed before everybody. I didn't touch it. I said, work! And the work club started working. He was on the wall. Hop. Were well, you not there? And they started working. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I was sitting in the place of worship. Once that thing starts burning, ladies, the Bible says those who worship, they go on the spirit line. So this is the time to engage worship, to give to daddy what he cannot give himself. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And daddy also will give you what the best of your effort cannot give yourself. I'm talking, I'm talking to somebody. <laughs> Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, so I told you, I said the first way to position yourself is through what? Spirituality. Am I right? So these are the three ways of spirituality. Feasting on the world, praying in the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, worshipping. Now, the, the last way, I'll tell you, I said there are two ways. One is spirituality. The second one now, ladies and gentlemen, is oneness. What do I call it? Which I call love. What do I call it? Now, this is the time, ladies and gentlemen, to operate in unprecedented love. This is the time to settle scores with those that you have been having issues with. This is the time to allow the love of God to have his way in your life. This is the time, ladies and gentlemen, to align yourself with everybody, to be a blessing to those who curse you. And ladies and gentlemen, to ladies and gentlemen, to do good to those who have despisefully used you. Ladies and gentlemen, to forget about the pains. Ladies and gentlemen, and ladies and gentlemen, import gains instead, even into their lives. To be a blessing and not a curse. This is the time to forgive. Ladies and gentlemen, and it's a time to forget. It's a time to walk in love. It's a time to call those who are keeping malice with you. It's a time to look at everybody and just begin, ladies and gentlemen, to share in love with them. It's a time not only to conceive and to heat your food all by yourself. It is a time, ladies and gentlemen, to give. That's why we are doing food sharing as well on Sunday. Invite people. Let them come and, and share. We are giving our raw, raw materials. It's a time for love. The Bible says in John chapter number 13 and verse 35. John 13 and verse 35. Jesus says, By this shall I be known as my disciples, when ye love one another. By this shall thou be known. By this shall thou be known as my disciples, when ye love one another. What is he saying? That means the true identity of your Christianity is love. By this shall there be a total reflection of the fact that you are divine martyrs. You are the disciplined ones. The ones that have taken after my training reflecting my glory. The one that when they look at you and they can say, no, this one are reflecting the glory of Christ. They are like Christ. As it was in Acts chapter 11 in Antioch that they said, no, these people, they are like Christ. They call them Christians for the first time. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? He said, by this shall I be known as the one carrying my glory. Reflecting after the other 
of the trainings of my glory that you have received. He said, when you love. So the absence of love makes what I call all your Christian training a non-entity. He completely obliterates even the benefits of your Christianity and relegates, ladies and gentlemen, every gain even of your discipleship in God. That if there is no love, nothing, ladies and gentlemen, comes to bear. You need love. For everything to be made manifest. You need love for everything to be made manifest. So it is a condition in scriptures. Acts chapter number 2. The Bible said, you know in Acts chapter number 1, uh, verses 14 and 15, the Bible says, and these ones, they prayed, in, they, they, had, they had prayers, they continued in prayers and supplications, and they were in one accord. Now, the oneness of the accord continued to Acts chapter number 2, verse 1. The Bible said, and they, and they were seated in the upper room, and they were all in one accord. Now the time has come, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care whether it is Mercedes you have been sitting in or ladies and gentlemen whether it is Lexus you need to come out and come into a court <laughs> am I talking to somebody here you need to come out or wherever you are and move into one accord and the bible said while they were in one accord they saw and they heard and counter started they heard the sound as of a rushing mighty wind and they saw cloven tongues of fire parting and sitting upon each and every one that means everyone had an encounter in this meeting everybody will have an encounter i say everybody will have an encounter even those who came without praying they will have an encounter those who are stepping to this church for the first time i am prophesying oh man oh man they brought a sick man onto uh, 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 evangelist Umar Pai. and the man had cancer of the blood and Umar Pai said God Jare you are healed and they now went to meet Mama Umar Pai. Mama now came Mama said please pray for him Umar Pai said why should I pray I said I've told him he's healed he said they don't know that prophecy is higher than prayers because prophecy is a direct release of the prayer is firstly going up to download answers prophecy is direct answer direct release of power straight into the situation do you understand what I'm talking about now please I am prophesying I don't need to pray before it happens I'm releasing the word. I said there will be a touch on every life. <laughs> the Bible says in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 10. He said, ask you of the Lord, even the rain in the time of the latter rain. And the Lord will make dark clouds and give rain unto everyone grass. That means everybody shall be touched. Everybody shall be touched. Everybody shall be touched. Shall be touched. The lame will walk. The blind will see. I said the sick is healed. The poor will jump for prosperity. In the name of Jesus, the unmarried will enter marriage. The single will come out of singleness. The desperate will come out of hopelessness. In the name of Jesus, I see men and women walking out of despair. I see them walking out of despair. I see them walking out of the lonely highland of poverty. In the vast ocean, in the midst of the vast ocean of material wealth. They are walking into the vast ocean of material wealth. They are walking into the increase of God. Many shall be endowed with gift. Anointing of the Holy Ghost is resting on lives. I prophesy as a receive it. Every seat. Hey, everybody go down and begin to touch on every seat. Begin to touch every chair and be prophesying. Just talk, 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 talk quickly, quickly. Let every chair be touched. We are prophesying. The prayer of tonight is already getting fulfilled. The power of God is moving. Prophesy. Anybody that sits on you will never leave this place the same way. I say in the name of Jesus, by the encounter of the meeting, the glory that excels, the surpass, yeah, 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 yeah. the surpass and glory will never bypass them. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior, is a lie on those days. In the name of Jesus, He can pass you by. He touches on everyone grass. He touches on everyone grass. And He parted and sat on everyone. Nobody shall be excluded. All lines shall not be excluded. All grace shall not be excluded. Come and touch on every seed. The power of the Spirit is moving. I said, The power of the Spirit is moving. Oh man, oh man. Somebody has just been healed around the Hanko area, struck the leg area. Somebody has just been healed. You are watching me online. You could not walk. Rise up and walk right now. Rise up and walk. The pains of your body is leaving you right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh man, oh man. Oh man, oh man. Oh man, oh man. He's moving all over this place. He's touching everywhere. Pastors, man the four corners. Man the four corners of this place. Pastors, man the four corners of this auditorium. Pastors, move to the four corners. The power of the Spirit is all over this place right now. There's a glory explosion in this place. There's a glory explosion in this place. There's a glory explosion in this place. Oh, man, I will shock at Pastors, man the four corners. Man the four corners. Man the four corners. There is a glory explosion. 
Every pastor right now, lift up holy hands. Begin to blow it in tongues. I see fire moving through the four corners of this auditorium. I see the power of God preparing this auditorium. There will be, ladies and gentlemen, such an explosion that this auditorium shall be declared insufficient to accommodate. By the power of God, He's the glory of the Lord. He's the glory of the Lord. He's the glory of the Lord. Everybody rise with your hands lifted. Begin to prophesy His the glory. Begin to prophesy His the glory. All over this place is the glory. All over this auditorium is the glory. Everywhere is the glory. Masota Yagaba. Laparakata. The weak Lekebo Sakata will say, I am strong. I said, from this moment, the Lord told me, He said, this conference will mark the beginning of a new era of signs and wonders in this ministry. Somebody begin to prophesy a new era of enlargement. I said, what has concluded many? What has limited many? Every barrier and restrictions on your life and destiny. They are getting broken by the power of the Spirit. What an emancipation even conference. What a liberation meeting. What an emancipation conference. What a freedom meeting. Oh, Manato Sakata. Mata Soketo Yagaba. We proclaim liberty all over this auditorium. We proclaim freedom. We proclaim progress. We proclaim increase. What has kept men down is leaving them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. The glory that exists. All the pastors begin to shout the glory that exists. All the pastors begin to shout the glory that exists. And let the auditorium shout the glory that exists. Somebody shout the surpassing glory. Shout the loudest, greater glory. While the pastors, while the pastors remain where they are, everybody see them. Something is about to happen right now. Something is about to happen. The Bible says, and while they were of one accord, the glory filled the whole place. But do you know one thing? The Bible said in 2 Corinthians, please project 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 13 and, verses 13 and 14. Second Corinthians chapter 5 are the dedication of the temple of Solomon. This is the temple of Jesus. Acts chapter 2. That the glory filled the place when they were in one accord. Now I wanted to see something, ladies and gentlemen, that happened in the temple of Solomon as well. Second Corinthians chapter number 13. Sorry, chapter number 5 and verses 13 and 14. The Bible said, can we all read together? One, two, go. And it came to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one, yes. To make one sound to be heard in praising and what? And thanking the Lord. So praise has to be there, it's an essential ingredient. As the thanksgiving has to be there, it's an essential ingredient. And the sound has to be there, it's an essential ingredient, yes. Uh, yes. Then was the house filled with what? With clouds. Yes. Even the house of the Lord. So that there is a glory, ladies and gentlemen, people will be on the floor like anything. It's the glory that exhales. So that the priest could not stand. Yes. By reason of the cloud. Yes. For the glory of the Lord has filled the house. While they were one, the Bible says, and it came to pass when the trumpeters, you see, and the priests, everybody, and the musicians, where has what? Has one. The moment they entered into oneness, glory started. And they were all in one accord, and the Holy Ghost came. It is a necessary condition. This is the time for oneness. This is the time to release those you, you have been keeping offenses with. In Kenahagin's meeting, Kenahagin was sharing an experience of a sister that came that had a disease. The disease had lasted for so many years, and about 18 years or so. And then, can I again preach on love that day? And the woman went home and called her brother. They, 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 they have not been talking for only God knows how many years. Is it 30 or 50 years? Because of some offense. And they finished it that day. He said, as the woman knelt down, he said, the disease disappeared. Everything. Because when there is love, the power of God is able to move. Oh, I was watching R.W. Shambach before he went to be with the Lord. He said, Sunday service was to start. And there were these two sisters. One came in. He said, one couldn't speak in tongues. 
They have prayed and prayed. This sister did not receive speaking in tongues. I don't know why. He said, and the other had goitra. Adobe Bishop Shambach is heavyweight, you know, in healing. Uh, I remember when Rob Pasley or something was introducing him on TV. He said, this is God's heavyweight champion when it comes to healing. And that's the truth. Adobe Bishop Shambach received the mantle of Hehe Hale. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now, and with that, that woman had a goiter that Adobe Bishop Shambach lay hands and lay hands and the goitra did not disappear. This is what I'm talking about. And see, I was looking at them, and the two of them came to the church. The moment they met themselves, one went like this, the other went like this. Shambach said, enough is enough. This shall not happen in this church again. Call the two of them. Bring them together and said, what's the problem? This one said, uh, he said this to me uh, last year. I did this or two years ago or five years ago. He said this to me. And since that time, I just don't want to see her. No, no, no. I hate her. The other woman said, man of God, she's just this and that. I just hate her. She's too petty. I can't stand her. I can't. How don't be sure I said, you have to forgive yourselves? And, you have to do and the moment they forgave themselves and they had hands, as Andrew Blishaba was there, instantly the one that could not speak in tongues started speaking in tongues. And the one that carried obvious goiter, the goiter disappeared instantly. This is a problem that has been perennial in their Christianity. As love was restored, the move of the Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, can take place. I don't know who I'm talking to here, has they have one. Ladies and gentlemen, the glory fills the place. The Bible says in Acts chapter number 4, and where they prayed, the, spirit, the Bible said they were half filled with the Holy Ghost, and the praise shook, Acts chapter 4 verse 31. And the multitude of them that believed were one heart and of one soul. And the Bible said the next verse, what was the next thing? The Bible says, and with power, with great power, the Bible said they bore witness to the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them. Now, they received power, Acts 1, 8. Now it has moved to with great power. Why, ladies and gentlemen, oneness is added. Anytime there is one is there is always, always power exponential power ladies and gentlemen extravaganza in operation i don't know who i'm talking to here ladies and gentlemen the glory you have never seen is about to happen right now begin to pray in the holy ghost pastors holy hands lifted begin to pray in the holy ghost everybody pray in the holy ghost right now the glory of god Leporatok zeleros te sopra ligero to sakata ya gaba shakata. Linda lero dok tok se pro ligero tok se keto ya gaba sata agabaya. Uh, parada gazo da bo pradi goro dos te zakata ya. Mene dok tek suke pro ligero tek se keto ya gabo shakata. Mila tok se keto ke pro magaba gaba braba barakata ya gaba sakata ya gaba. Let the weak say I. Make a shakata. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, bro, the choir, take your place. Menama tak zakata ba ya bro lege dok tek soko to ya gaba. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Men bro ni gaba absolutely on the spirit line. Absolutely on the spirit line. Ma bro ni gadosta. For what eyes have not seen to take place in this place. For what years have never heard to take place in this auditorium. Ma bro para katok zeke to ya gabo shakata. Oh man, oh man. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Man, oh man, pray in the Holy Ghost. Make sota yagabo shakata yagaba. Oh, parregete zeketo yagabo shakata yagaba. Oh, for us. Let the weak say it. Let the weak say it. Yes. 
is like an evulgence. Yeah. It's creating a power field all over this place. Oh, Maracaba, Pastors, exchange positions. Spread this glory. Pastor, here, move down there. The ones there, move up right now. Oh, yeah. Pastors, exchange. This is a prophetic instruction by the power of the Spirit. Oh, Makasa, Katayagabaya. Spirit of the Lord is telling me, He said, There are some people here that there are some limiting spirits that have been following you. He said, From tonight, those limiting spirits depart. <laughs> oh, Parato Zakatayakabo Shakatayakaba. Forever you will be the land upon, upon a stroke. I glad. Up holy hands everywhere, all over the auditorium right now, and sing that song. The power of God right now is worship, is moving as you are worshiping. I glad about my name, who worship you over these meetings have been opened the traffic of angels have started anybody that comes into this temple right now receives a miracle for this is God's house the ladder reaching heaven right now has been connected in a different way and mighty angels power angels are moving right now glory angels are moving 
and I saw lambs, lambs, lambs everywhere flying all over this atmosphere. God is igniting men everywhere. Wow, wow. I'm looking at lambs everywhere. Lambs everywhere. No darkness will escape this light. Oh. Hallelujah. Holy communion right now, the heaven has been opened. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just give him all the glory. take this right now he said for those that hit me will live by me you have an inheritance of the life that I carry you partake of me and you partake of my glory as you break this right now it's an initiation to greater glory take it break it and hit it In the same way, he took the wine and he said, This is the New Testament, and my blood poured out for you. As you take it, take it in remembrance of me. What a glory of his presence. There is such an awesome presence of God in this place. 
If you need any miracle, take it now. I'm telling you, the anointing is all over my body. As in the power is rushing like mighty rivers of waters. All through my body right now, the river of life is there. It's moving right now. Wherever I go, it, it makes it anything that comes across, even alive. Jump into this river. There is a river in this place. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Talk to him right now. You need anything, talk to him. There is a glory that he exhales. It surpasses needs. Like a It removes and transcends beyond barriers. Is the greater glory of God. The surpassing glory. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, just to praise you. The Lord said, there's somebody here, there's an accident the enemy planned. He said, I've cleared it off your way. He said, in peace you will go. And in peace you will come back. See the spirit of the living God. Even if the accident is a robbery, God said, I've cleared it off your way. You will see it happening by your right. You will see it happening by your left. It will never come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked. But you will never experience one. Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Give him all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Please take the wine right now. The power of the Spirit is going all through you. Thank you, Jesus. Just worship His holy name. Friday, as we have all been told, the conference has started already. The glory is in the house. Hallelujah. The heavens are open. Hallelujah. He has opened the floodgates of heaven right now. It's raining all over this place. In the realm of the spirit, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, men are changing levels in this Zion. This is the mountain of the Lord, the mountain of transfiguration. In some other culture I'm talking about, the poor comes here and is changed even unto greater glory. The sea comes and is changed unto what? greater glory. This is a place of supernatural change. Supernatural conversion. Glory be to God. So Thursday is the time for evangelism. Starting from tonight, make sure you say to yourself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invite not less than five people to that conference. Now listen, five is the perfect number of grace. If you want it so much, ladies and gentlemen, come with that. It's a prophetic instruction. And for as many as will keep this instruction, I see the God of glory confirming his glory in your life. So go and invite people, at least five people, five people. Let this whole place be filled with the, with the presence of people. Now, on Friday, there will be healings and miracles. The man of God that is coming, Apostle Ayatara, is anointed with healings and miracles. So it will be anointing. It will be impacting. It will be blessing. It will be, I mean, moving in the dimensions of the Spirit as he is led. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? And the glory of God fills the whole temple in Jesus' name. On Saturday, we'll be having medical outreach. By the grace of God, tests will be done to all women. Please tell all women. This one is for all women. Every woman married or married that one way or the other, um, you know, they need a test. Please tell them, let them all come. And then there will be, you know, tests for all. And at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, um, they, they, we're doing tests for men as well. So, I mean, it's just going to be a glory galore thing. I might talk to somebody here. Uh, by the grace of God. And on Sunday, we'll be having miracles. 
the man of God that is coming, Pastor Daniel, is coming the strength of the spirit. He's preaching presently in a crusade now in Maiduguri. You know, and um, you know, uh, I mean, and as I was, we're praying together this afternoon, I was seeing miracles in that crusade. So I was discussing with him. Oh my goodness, you needed to see, the, the man is, is ready for the exception to, to take place, you know, in this place. So please, everybody, let us uh, be here, let's invite people on Sunday. Definitely we have to have more chairs. I don't know how we're going to do it. We're going to have more chairs. And, um, <laughs> ah, there's a glory that exists. I don't even know how to close this meeting. We can't close it. You can only go with our glory. Oh, the glory. Just go home. Just go home with that glory. Of your presence. We your temple. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Give you reverence. Oh, so The Lord said there is somebody here. The Lord said it will not come as one, it will come as double. Amen. I don't know whether you have an expectation. God said it will come as double. And the Lord said there's someone here you won't need to borrow. He said, I have made the way to clear it. Hallelujah. Give him all the glory. As the people experience his glory. blessed by this message. For more information, prayers and counselling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080-33-706-938 and 080-2828-1839 or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl on youtube search divine glory christian church our twitter handle is at dgccintl stay blessed